This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Andrew, welcome to Five Questions. Hey, thanks for having me. What were your biggest challenges growing up? Oof, my biggest challenges. Um, I was sort of my biggest challenge, I'll be honest. I got in my, I got in my own way quite a bit. Um, and uh, it took me a while to figure out to like, you know, to not try to catch up to other people or compete with other people. I spent a lot of time, especially as a youngster, being very jealous of what other people had, which does not serve you. It does not. It's sort of just a waste of time, ultimately. So I wish I had um, had learned that lesson a little bit earlier just to compete with myself and not everyone around me. Well, especially in today's world where with social media, everyone's seeing, you know, the, the fancy car that they're, yeah. you know, someone else has in some other state or country or whatever. And they might, that, that individual might not even own that car or own that mm-hmm. house or have that lifestyle. They might just be doing it to get views, likes, and comments. So awesome. it's almost like this whole perception of, uh, you know, uh, comparing yourself to others is, has had a new meeting, it's gotten worse and it's much easier to fall into that trap. 100%. And I I mean, I'm, I feel fortunate that we did not have social media when I was a kid. Um, it was hard enough without that. So I certainly feel for, for young folks today where comparison, comparing yourself and comparison shopping um, for what your life should look like is, um, is, a, real, is a real problem, I, I think. Yeah. Speaking of these problems, why did you decide to tackle the most foundational questions of growing up in your new book, Uncle of the Year? You mean this book? Yeah, look at that. I like white covers a lot too. Thank because you. the words and the pictures usually pop. It pops a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I felt like in my first book, Too Much Is Not Enough, I sort of talked a lot about my childhood and a lot about my early days in New York and sort of getting start getting my career started and this next uh, this next book is 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 about sort of my sort of struggle at, with an understanding of like what it means to be an adult. And I kept sort of thinking it was going to start with a certain job or a certain relationship or you know a certain apartment. Um, and I was sort of collecting these things, but still never really felt like. I was getting anywhere that I was, that I had like reached the finish line. I kind of kept moving the line or the line kept moving for me. So, um, so that's sort of where the, my writing had sort of taken me after that first book with the, the more that I sort of just, cause I always, I start just by writing for myself just to sort of see what kind of shape things will go and what kind of things I'm thinking about and what seems relevant in that moment. Um, and that's where it sort of led me is sort of trying to figure out like, am I an adult? And obviously at 44, I'm an adult. Like <laughs> that, this is it, this is it. So I had to get on board with that. But I felt like my my personal markers of time um, did not really reflect a lot of people around me, certainly not, you know, the rest of my family in terms of, you know, getting married and having kids and, and my job is it's, you know, it's not like one long-term job. It's like, it's several jobs throughout the year that sort of make up my career. So it was hard to sort of pinpoint one moment to be like, and I've made it just because it sort of keeps, it keeps going. It just keeps going. It's very interesting because now I've interviewed thousands of people over the course of my career. And I just remember, you know, speaking to like Steve Aoki and I said, I asked him, when did you think you made it? And he actually said he never had a point in time when he thought he made it. And actually there's been several people who have responded in the same way. And I think especially with successful people, when you do projects like you have, it's like, when's the next book? When's the next Broadway show? When's the next this, this, this? So I think the, the obstacle that, both myself and other people, you know, have faced is, you know, you know, not taking a moment to even reflect on what you've done. <laughs> and that's part yeah. of the, the nature of the industry too. It's very easy to, to do that, to sort of get caught up in um, what's next. And I feel like a lot of times, and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, sort of a formal interview like this, or if it's going home and seeing like an, you know, an aunt or something that always the question is, but what are you doing next? Like, what's the next thing? And what are you, you know, and even talking about this book, people have been like, well, what's the next book? And I'm like, well, I just finished this one. (laughs) 
So I'd like to talk about this book or this movie or this show that I'm currently doing. Um, but it's, I think that's just sort of, it's certainly the nature of, of uh, the business that I'm in, but also I think just human nature. It's like, what's, what's coming next though? What's the next thing you've got? And especially people see the output, but not as much the input. And if someone hasn't, for instance, written a book before, they don't know what it takes and everything that goes into being able to do that, getting the book deal, you yeah. know, you know, having that outline chapter by chapter, the daily work, then yep. as what you're doing right now, promoting and marketing, they don't know all of that. They just see the end products. They're like, oh, just do another one. I, I think that's yeah. a big part of it as well as the outside world might not fully understand what people like in the arts, like you and I do, especially yeah. they see the output, not the journey to get there. Uh, latching onto what we were saying earlier, why do you think people have this tendency to try and please others to, and to be recognized for their work? I mean, I think everybody wants to be good at what they've chosen to do, right? Or really be good at anything that they're they're currently doing. So I think that there's always a a sort of need to, at least for me, there is a need to to excel at whatever it is. If it's, you know, if it's acting, great. If it's writing, great. If it's singing, yes, I want to be very good at that. If it's, you know, if it's driving, I want to be the best driver in Los Angeles. I want to be the best, uh, you know, the best packer of my suitcase when I travel. I want to be the most organized. I want to, so I always sort of, you know, you, you can't help but sort of compare yourself to other things that you see around you. But yeah, I think that, you know, certainly for me, yeah, I feel like it's human nature to to want to succeed in anything that you try to do. It doesn't feel good to sort of not reach the bar. Although sometimes I feel like the bar that I set is so much higher than it needs to be. Um, and it is like, as you said, like sometimes it's, it, it's, I mean, not sometimes, it's always very important to you know, sort of celebrate even small wins or things that seem to be small or just anything that sort of keeps you motivated and going. I think it's important to take that time to, to, to celebrate those wins. And I wonder too, it's like, if you set the bar that high and you don't fully reach it. So like, let's say the bar is at a 10 and you get to an eight, that might not be so bad either because the 10 no. almost pushed you to get to the eight. Exactly. You keep, you got to keep trying, right? And you have Keep a uh, keep another goal in in line in in mind. Absolutely. And what role do your children play in your life, and how have they impacted you? Well, I personally don't have children, but my boyfriend has two kids. He has um, uh, ten year old twins, and I have ten nieces and nephews. That um, you know, when there are kids around, it's a very easy sort of marker of time and a very um, a very clear sort of visual of the passing of time of school years and, and milestones of, you know, when they're walking, when they're talking, what grade they're in, what, you know, what sort of activities they're doing. And I didn't have, you know, I had it with my nieces and nephews. Um, when I started dating uh, my boyfriend, Tuck Watkins, he, you know, that was the first time I had ever dated anyone with children. And it became, you know, very clear that that there's a whole different timeline when it comes to, to having children. So, I mean, that's sort of where the, the title, that is where the title of, you know, uncle of the year and other debatable triumphs. Yeah. <laughs> and I did, I did want to succeed at being like the, you know, when my siblings started having kids, I wanted to be the cool uncle. And I wanted to, you know, I, I don't, they are all in Omaha, Nebraska. I live in New York city. I have for their, all of their lives. Um, and so I wasn't around a lot and I felt a lot of pressure when I would come to visit to like show up and be the super fun uncle or when they would come to New York to make sure it was like the most amazing like overcompensating overcompensating. And I learned, you know, with kids, like, uh, especially with my nieces and nephews, like when they would come to visit New York, like they weren't on my schedule, they weren't on my timeline. So it's a lot of adapting to, well, what do they want to do? And what's interesting to them? And um, not everything, you know, that I thought was, you know, it, it, that I thought was cool as a kid, you know, if I was visiting an uncle who was like working on Broadway, I would have lost my mind. Um, at that time, it's not all of their things. Like, I don't think we, I have an actor in the bunch of my 10 nieces and nephews. So like the sort of the thing that I thought was like the most cool um, didn't really hold a lot of weight with all of those kids. And so I had to sort of adjust, 
what are they interested in and what do they want to do? And ultimately I found they just, you know, when they come to visit, they want to hang out with uncle Andy. They're not concerned about, you know, what I'm doing at night eight times a week. Um, you know, so they, they, they wanted to spend time with me. So it was a big, um, it was, it was an, it was an adjustment over the years to figure out like, how does one entertain children in Manhattan? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I there's a lot of things that did. <laughs> <laughs> for adults, it's like an adult playground, right? I always like yeah. some of my friends there are like, oh, you have Peter Pan syndrome because it's like, it, it's like college, but as an adult in a way. And yeah. so, yeah, but for kids, I none guess of you just have skills. to start to Google and figure <laughs> Yeah, none of my skills of like, and this is a great restaurant and this is a cool bar. Like I couldn't do that. They just want their French fries, right? Like, yeah. So I, I it, it got sort of simpler in some ways, but also it took a little more research on my part over the years. And what's your best piece of career advice? My best piece of career advice, sort of what I said. I mean, I think keep your eyes on your own paper. Um, I think that... Um, you know, comparing yourself to other people and what other people have, um, it never worked well for me. And it wasn't until I really sort of accepted that I can only do what I do. And I have a skill set that, yes, it, you know, it can grow and it can change, but it also, um, it, a lot of it is just sort of personality based and what I bring to the table. And it's not right for every role and it's not right for every project. So, when I finally sort of accepted that, like around 30, um, and I realized I, I can only do what I do and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get every job and I'm not going to, I'm not going to win every award. It's, you know, uh, so I, I just sort of had to come to terms with that. I can only do my best, my personal best and, and, and focus on that rather than, you know, looking at what everyone else has around me and wishing, I want to be there. I want to be, you know, a certain amount of that is healthy. You know, it keeps you ambitious and it keeps you working and it keeps you, but if you do it too much, it just, it can really stun to you and, and sort of suck you down. So that that's something that I still struggle with, but certainly gotten a lot easier over the years. So I would say, especially if you're pursuing a career in the arts, but really any career, like just you do your best and focus on that and don't worry about what everyone else is doing around you. I love it. Well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being Thanks on the show. For me. Thanks so much.